Hey everyone, it's Ricky's Rock and Reviews, and today we're going to be looking at The Head of Memer by Richard Lee Byers. This was published by Aconite under the partnership with Marvel and under the Legends of Asgard banner. This was published in 2020 when the partnership started between Aconite and Marvel. They're, they're creating several stories within the Marvel Universe. They have different banners like uh, uh, Stories Untold, Heroines, uh, and then the Xavier Institute and even more now. They have several books. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed this novel. I think there's a lot of strong things about this. People don't typically think about Marvel and, and prose novels, but they, there are several of them that have come out from different publishers and, and Aconite's the latest one to be pumping them out. And they, they're seriously pumping them out. They have so many now, but this was one of the original ones that started it all in uh, 2020. This one focuses on Heimdall, and there, there are although there's like brief mentions of, of Thor, and I think maybe Loki in there, this is really centered on him and his sister, Sif. And um, one of the things I really liked about this novel is the way that it's framed. It starts off with Volstagg and his son, and he's trying to teach him a lesson about how all fights are not one the same way, you know. You have to change your fighting style. You have to become a little bit wiser sometimes in order to defeat uh, different obstacles or conflicts that are in your way. And so it, it, the story is Volstagg telling his son um, the story of Heimdall and basically Heimdall's origin story. Uh, Heimdall, as we all know, he's the guardian of the Bifrost and um, he has like an all-seeing eye kind of. And this story goes into how he develops those powers and some things that he acquires in his uh, in his armory and his repertoire, along with him and, and his sister Sif. Now, they're kind of forced on an adventure because Heimdall thinks something is awry or amiss with uh, the Odin sleep, which happens every once in a while. But he feels like Odin has been sleeping for way too long and the frost giants are advancing into Asgard. And he's a, he's a warrior, and he's kind of like in the front lines. And he's, he's realizing that the Frost Giants are not fighting the way they used to fight. They're a lot smarter, and they seem like... It seems like they kind of have, like, the upper hand in some battles. Like, they know more than they should. So it causes him to question what's going on. And in a way, he also kind of has to rebel against... Asgard and Frigga who's running Asgard while Odin is sleeping it's not that's not a spoiler but they kind of have to break into Odin's vault or like where he is doing his Odin sleep and once they're there they see that something's missing well which is the head of Mimur which uh, if you know anything about Norse mythology it's kind of a long convoluted story as to how Odin gets the head of Mimur but anyways it's a, it's a it's just a head of some decapitated like god and the the head is always saying wise things and can answer questions about what the future is going to look like and so he's he, he the head plays an advisory role to odin and in his chamber it's missing kind of that's kind of like the catalyst for the adventure and then not only are like the actual bad guys onto him but so is like the state of asgard since sif and heimdall are their own characters and they have their own way of thinking it, it causes conflict sometimes but what I really liked is that there was that sister and brotherly love is, was always there. They're always there to protect each other. And it's really refreshing to see that type of dynamic because it, even when things look bad, the, the through line is it's always optimistic and trying to get the mission done for the good of Asgard and for all of the Asgardian people. It's just a really fun adventure novel. There's several things I really liked about this book. First is the characters. Heimdall grows. Throughout the novel, Richard Lee Byers is able to get into Heimdall's psyche and his thought process as as uh, as the story progresses. His sister Sif is is uh, really aggressive and and she's like a, a real go getter. She wants to constantly fight, and he's Heimdall is not like that. He's more of a uh, more calculated, and I really like their dynamic. Another thing that I really liked about this was the world building. You get to learn a lot about uh, Yggdrasil, the world tree, and the nine realms. Um, the book kind of spans over some of these uh, realms and locations, which are really cool. And it's always exciting when you're jumping from place to place. It's also really cool how they describe uh, the, the way they travel through the realms. 
like in the movies it's pretty simple they don't really explain it they just kind of they, there's some magic and they're there um but this it's actually like a, a pretty cool process and only some people can do it without um you know going mad um because the world tree is kind of like an expanse of, so uh, a normal person going through it would would go mad but you'll I don't want to spoil it, but there's 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 a reason they can get through. Anyways, stuff like that is really cool. There's different creatures along the world tree and stuff, and um, and in every single realm they, they encounter different things. The frost giants are really cool in this. Um, there's several different storm giants, and they all have different powers and stuff. There's kind of some twists and turns as well. I really like learning about Norse mythology, and I I really feel like this book stands on its own. Not once did I miss Thor or Loki. Um, this is very much a Heimdall's story. And he, he is an interesting character all on his own. It's also the beginning of Heimdall's powers. Because that head of Mimir and, and Heimdall are becoming intertwined forever after this adventure. So it's really cool to see the birth of a hero. And a hero that's not really explored all the time. We always think of Thor when it comes to Asgard and stuff like that. So it's really refreshing. Um, especially now, like... The original Thor film from Kenneth Branagh was so cool and um, everything in that movie like the world building that this this novel has that entire feel throughout the whole thing and it's focusing on a character that we don't we don't see so much of great big battle at the end lots of payoff in there and I, I really commend um, Aconite the publisher to, to sign off on this story from Richard Lee Byers he's such a creative guy and he did such a great job. I can't, I can't speak highly enough of this book. I, I really love it. And um, one of the other things I liked about this novel is how much more I wanted. And I'm happy to say this is the beginning of a trilogy. Um, I've actually, I, I've read the second book, which is Rebels of Anaheim. And I want to do a review of that later. And there is a third called uh, The Prisoner of Tartarus. Richard Lee Briars is, is knocking these out of the park. Um, so I really, I highly recommend this book. I would really appreciate it so much if you can give us a, uh, a thumbs up, a like, hit the like button and subscribe. I really want to bring more attention to, to Marvel and DC prose novels and just other comics in general that I really like that I, I don't see a lot on YouTube. Um, I really want to do this uh, Rebels of Anaheim review as well. And I'll be reading the Prisoner of Tartarus soon. So I'll have that review as well. Thanks, guys.